The Creality CR6 SE, a new 3D printer that has gained a massive following, generating almost 2.5 million dollars in pledges and Kickstarter at the time of filming. Is the hype worth it? Is the machine any good? Should you back the Kickstarter? Do my words even matter? Do you like, do you, do you like that? Do you like that thing? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. They do. And they don't. And I'll try to explain right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, welcome back. The CR6 SE is the latest offering from Creality. Its specs dictate quite a capable machine, with it borrowing quite a lot from the massively successful Ender 3 platform. Chuck likes the Ender 3, you know. Sure does. The base contains the electronics and the power supply. You'll also find a full-size SD card reader and a mini USB port right up front. The 4.3-inch touchscreen right over there is the HD Color LCD touchscreen. It attaches to the extrusion on the right side of the machine and a clever little spool holder on the left. Oh, and I can't, I can't forget, Sean. The drawer. The drawer. Yeah. I did have two problems with the touch screen. Uh, first, when I attempted to use the feed menu for loading and unloading filament, it would freeze the screen and I would have to power cycle the printer. Creality sent a new firmware package that fixed it. The other issue is the screen can only show files of a certain file length. If a G code file name is too long, the screen won't even show it. I would imagine the software update could probably fix that as well. For a deeper look at the electronics, I highly suggest having a look at Chuck Hellebuck's CR6 SE video right around the four minute mark. The build dimensions are 235 on X, 235 on Y, and 250 on Z or Z, though the build plate size is nearly the same as a Prusa Mark III flex plate rotated 90 degrees. The bed is glass, and it's listed as carborundum glass. It's similar to an ultra base coating on top of the glass with bare glass underneath. It's held in place with clips right here on the front and the back and the clips up front, they rotate allowing you to remove the glass. It's actually kind of neat. Unfortunately, I really don't see how a machine doesn't come with a flexible build plate as standard offering. Obviously the glass can be removed and machines can be outfitted with any number of build surfaces but a flexible build plate from the factory sure would have been a really nice touch. So for the next part I'm gonna talk about, I gotta remove this little cover. There's two screws that go in. One is really easy to find and take out and access. The other one, not so much. So the nozzle here, it has a more refined point than I've seen on other nozzles before that Creality has offered. And the hot end itself is actually a new design as well. Look at, and the heat sink behind this fan is actually slotted. Oh, and I misidentified the auto leveling component before. I called it an FSR, but it's actually a strain gauge, and that's it, right there. Ugh. There we go. Dual motors and lead screws power Z, essentially. And there's a belt at the top, and that keeps everything in sync. <laughs> X and Y both have belt tensioner knobs, allowing you to get the perfect tension. Y is right there. And X, right there. The heat bed can get to 110C, and the nozzle itself with a PTFE liner in the hot end goes to 260C. Thermal runaway protection is enabled and tested, and I proved it, and it's awesome. Although the wording could change just a little bit. The extruder in the back, it's a new design. You move the lever to one side and it disengages the bearing, allowing filament to move through. Move the lever to the other side and filament is locked into place, movable only by the extruder. Right before the extruder is a photoelectric sensor and that's to detect filament runout conditions. That's the filament sensor. I'm gonna snip the filament right there. Once that blue light goes out, that means it's detected that there's no more filament and it should do something. Ah, haha. -ha. Unfortunately, it's not always easy to get filaments through the sensor and through the extruder. Most of the time when loading filament, I would have to spin it or twist it with my fingers in order to get it to move all the way through past the extruder gear. When filaments did run out, it would pause the print, which is fantastic. It should do that, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. But the right. problem is the printer would then stop heating the bed. So if it takes a while to change out filaments, 
the temperature is going to drop significantly and it could result in parts coming away from the print bed. However, that is a software thing and I would imagine that could be fixed in the future. Finally at the top, there's a handle so you can take the machine with you wherever you go. That was fun. Yeah. We kind of toured the machine. We did. We, we took a tour of the CR6SE and uh, I had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along for that. But now that specs are out of the way, we should probably dive into some prints. And before we get started, all the prints that I'm going to show you were done using the default profiles in Creality Slicer 4.2, which is essentially a, a custom skinned uh, version of Cura. If we're going to talk about prints, the first ones we got to talk about are ones printed with this Creality PLA in a nice blue. I think Sean was really excited about that because blue is pretty easy to film compared to white or black. Yeah, correct. Okay, good. So with this, uh, one of the first things I printed was this. It was an overhang test and it was on the SD card and uh, numbers 30, 45, 60, and 70 relate to the angle and uh, stuck to the bed just fine. Printed this just fine, but most notably, we have to take a look underside and the underside, even at 70 degrees, it looks pretty good. That is a good print. It looks really good, yeah. yeah. That's good. But also on the card was this. They called it a negative space test. And it's uh, it's almost like a clearance test or a tolerance test. Uh, so I printed this out and uh, you can see the numbers up front. It goes, oops, back you. It goes 0 0.65432, correct? Yeah. Okay, so then the idea is these should all be loose because the printer should be able to get to that sort of clearance. And it did. Sure did. It did just fine. In fact, I lost a couple of these. I just found them when I was coming here to the office. <laughs> I wanted to have a little bit of fun. So there's this piece and there's uh, these pieces. Oh, and there's these pieces. It's gone. It's gone forever. You're never going to find that. It's in the lava. Again, this was printed with Creality's slicer. Uh, this model right here, printed like this. This was the support that was a part of it. It, just, it printed just like this. And uh, I was impressed because when I freed it, everything looked just fine. In fact, that 90 degree angle there, that right angle, that little spot sticking out, it worked just fine. I mean, I was impressed. I know that's software, it's just software, but still, Super cool. I liked it. I gotta figure out how to put this together. <laughs> so this is a, a catapult. Last time I dealt with one of these, it was with um, Taco Bell. Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. So look, it's together and it works. This is a model by Kirby Downey. Oh, really? Yeah. Good dude. Boy, it took forever. Okay, here we go. Oh, no. Hey, it works. It does work. Please don't hit the camera. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But listen, uh, so I saw my buddy Salvatore Lacourt, such a cool name. Uh, he showcased this on his channel and I saw it and I thought, I must print that. So I did. Works great, works great. Does it work great? Works great. It's not a 3D printer test without some flowalistic chain mail. It's pretty flowy pretty flowy. It printed just fine and it popped off the build plate and it and it did this. It's pretty flowy. That is a that is a good print. That is uh, Chuck Hellebuck's pawn. I think it's Chep Pawn. Called Chep Pawn. That is a good print. Looks beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I did some Maker's Muse tolerance tests. Uh, this is his lattice tolerance tolerance test. It didn't uh, it's a little it's a little fuzzy. Man, it looks like there's places where there's filament drooping. I don't know exactly what the problem might be. My guess is it's cooling related because the, the fan is only on one side. Um, the side that faced the fan looked fine. So it could be indicative of just needing more cooling, but it's still, it's still completed. I think that's, that's not too shabby. What's really cool though is this. This is the Maker's Muse tolerance or clearance and tolerance test. Uh, on here, you've got 0.5. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.15. With the idea being there is enough 
clearance around all these and the printer tolerances are good enough to be able to break them free. And honestly, uh, 05, 04, 03 were fine. 02, fine. 015, I just had to go, oh, and then it broke free. So all of them, all of them, all the way down to 0.15, and then it's left with the centerpiece. It comes out. Legend has it, uh, if you have this, and the centerpiece is able to be removed, a secret will be revealed to you. Uh, I did it, but I'm not gonna share it with you. Just go find this model from Maker's Muse and uh, see if you can't get all of them to be free. I did a Wexter Mini Joel. That's in Protopasta, Raspberry Bliss. It's a very pretty filament. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I think it looks fantastic. It's got a good crotch. It does. It's a good Joel crotch. It's a good Joel crotch. Uh, also, 3D Benchy. It's a, yeah, it's a great Benchy. It's a great Benchy. I really, really like how this Benchy turned out. This is in Protopasta's uh, Raspberry Bliss again. Uh, also, I've been printing a bunch of face shields lately. So this is my Manta Ray face shield. Just look at the extrusions on that though. It's, it's perfect. And again, this is default settings within Creality's little slicer. Oh wait, you know what? Yeah, it works. rocking it. Yeah. A little stringy, a little bit, yeah. just a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, let's see what's left. Oh, that is a fantastic vase. So what I did, this is when I was testing the filament runout abilities. So it's the Creality PLA at the bottom. Right here though, that is Mystic Green from Prusa. I love that filament. Cool I love that filament. Right above that is Polyalchemy FX Sandstone, which also I love. It is a great filament. And then above that, that is the Protopasta Raspberry Bliss. Uh, but filament runout worked. It detected it. We talked about how the temperature drops. Uh, it's, it's not the easiest to get that filament out. Uh, some of it, you can tell right there, there's a little string of it that got caught. Uh, however, there we go. Nice. Look at that. No tools needed. Done. And if you look down the, kind of the, the barrel of the vase, it's kind of a neat pattern. Do you see it? Oh yeah. That's cool. I really like this. Uh, this turned out great. This was on the SD card and it just, I made it more beautifuler by swapping out the filaments. Does it print ABS? I had this roll of Matter Hackers light blue ABS from 2013 and uh, I didn't have good luck with this. So I, I didn't have good luck with that. That's that, I was trying to print the, the, the Chep Pawn. Uh, I also had some black ABS from Ray's 3D that I tried and it, it just broke away from the build plate. That is, oh no. I tried the Creality build plate on top I flipped it over and tried bare glass with some Vision Miner nanopolymer adhesive. I flipped it back over and I tried that on the Creality build plate as well. ABS just wouldn't stick to it. I tried 90, I tried 100. Uh, ABS wasn't sticking for me. I couldn't get it to work. It was able to print it. Like if you, if you look at this, it's printing it well. It's just a matter of getting it to stick to something. And that leads me to the build plate itself being able to swap in another build plate. I mean, just go, Go get yourself a sheet of PEI and put it on there and I bet it would stick to it just fine. But I was not able to get ABS to stick. I didn't try that hard because uh, I don't ever print with ABS. I don't know a lot of people that do a lot of ABS prints. I know people that do a lot more PETG prints. Thankfully, I found a roll. This is Polymax PETG from Polymaker. And uh, I have burned through 33 rolls of PETG at home doing the face shield prints. I found this one, it got miscategorized. The box was put somewhere. So I had some PETG. I was really excited to try it. So I did first a Benchy. Again, default settings. It's not perfect. It's not like the PLA Benchy, but it completed and it still looks good. Like these sort of things, cooling or not cooling, temperature changes, speed changes, that's all software. Software will get that to where you need it to be. In fact, uh, there we go. There's the Chep Pond. Look at it. You can, you can see the seam, I think. Let's see. There it is. You can see the seam right there. Okay. Yep. Uh, other than that though, I mean, I think, I think it looks great. Not that it's a large print, not that it's hard to print, but it looks good in PETG. 
I did uh, from clock spraying 3D, I did print the oil can flask in BETG. I thought the machine handled it incredibly well. Uh, the bottom, have a look. So the bottom has these edges and they all came out great. I think that the handle looks good. A little bit of stringing in the top, not too, not too bad. Uh, this one, you can kind of see some layer inconsistencies in there, but it's really readily apparent because it's white. Uh, what I thought was interesting, I gave this to Sean off camera before we started recording. He goes, oh, that's so smooth. And then he held it against a, a, a light shining against the layers. He's like, oh wait, I see it. So it still feels smooth, it does, yeah. but visually it's going to change based on the direction that the light is coming in. I think it's a great print, honestly, honestly. Does it print flexibles? See that roll? That roll has been sitting out for years and it's actually seen some pretty bad days. I mean, look at that. Wow. I mean, I mean it got in stuff. a fight. You should have seen the other roll of filament. So you took a bite out of it. It looks like someone was hungry for some filament. Yeah, I mean, look at the other side too. I don't remember who made it. There's no label on it. But one of the things, I mean, this is super rubber bandy, right? Super flexible. Super flexible. So I tried to print a Benchy and that's what we get. <laughs> look, look, don't dismiss this. I'm being honest with you. So if you look at this Benchy, yes, it's stringy. Yes, there's filament where there shouldn't be any, but I want you, I want you to look at the sidewalls. I want you to look where there is consistency. You can see that the machine is laying it down consistently. I know it's stringy. It's got some boogers there, but look at the smokestack. I mean, come on, right? I couldn't find my other flexible filaments or else I would have tried it. I'm, I mean, obviously I have the machine. I'll keep trying flexible filaments, but all I did, uh, I set the, I, uh, the defaults in Creality Slicer were not good for flexibles. I did have to uh, set the speed. It was defaulting to 50 millimeters per second, which no, 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 no. I changed it to 20, but, oh geez, but, Rock and roll, it worked. Just set to 20 and it went. I think with properly dried, flexible filament, uh, it might have a chance. But I mean, look at that, that's, that is a, that Jeez, is a, it's flexible. That's a squishy bench. It's squishy. Wait, wait, ready? That's gone forever. It's in the lava. I have the higher ground! Stop. Finally, for prints, I do want to talk about this. Uh, it is a vertical windmill, essentially. I forget the name of it. I'm sure we'll put the name on screen. Nope. <laughs> You're fired! <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I want to, I want to show this off. Uh, you, put a, you put a bearing up here, and you put a bearing in the bottom, and you put, uh, you get some threaded rod, and you, you put a screw, or like a, like a, a nylock, down a bit, you set that with the bearing on it and then you put a nylock down and then you put that in your yard or in a garden or attached to a fence post or something and it just, it spins. And it's beautiful to see. And seeing the machine print this, first of all, it was just, it was wonderful to watch the machine laying down the filament that makes this. It's cool. This is, this is a wonderful model and it looks great out in your yard when there's a breeze going and it's spinning, but also, it looks really cool when the machine is printing it and the CR6 killed it. I mean, this is with Creality PLA. This is with default settings. This is with slice, hit print and go. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I guess we should, uh, we should sum this all up, shouldn't we? <sighs> okay, here we go. My job as someone who reviews 3D printers is tricky in situations like this. On one hand, I have one of the best performing 3D printers I've seen in a very long time. It's quiet, it's built really well, and the prints from it are fantastic. The CR6 SE feels like a product, like something you would find in a box on a shelf at a store. The unboxing was easy, assembly took no time, and it was spot on with the first print only needing to tension the belts a little bit more with those knobs. That's all it took to get up and running with this machine. I would have no problems 
recommending the CR6 to anyone. However, on the other hand, it's a Kickstarter. In the past, that has always meant what I was showing you wasn't what you would be getting. In the past, it meant I was giving you a glimpse at a possibility, almost like whetting your appetite enough to invest your hard-earned money into a project, hoping that your help would propel the project to success. Not all Kickstarter projects bear the fruit of success, so I've always said only invest in Kickstarter money you can afford to set on fire. That has changed. The CR6 SE is final hardware according to Creality. The hardware is ready to go to production and personally, the software is really close. So what's left to kickstart? To me, this feels less like an idea needing incubation and money to grow and more like a pre-order system. Is that okay? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is. Maybe what Kickstarter was is not what Kickstarter is. Those are questions with answers personal to you and you're going to need to figure out how you feel because the only way to get this machine is to back it on Kickstarter. Current early bird spots on Kickstarter have the machine for $319 US. That's not too bad. And I think it's a good deal if this is what gets delivered to backers. I asked Creality what the retail price would be after the Kickstarter and they said $429 US. Personally, I think that's a bit much for this package and I think sub $400 is where it needs to be. I think a CR6 SE priced at 349 US or below is something you should pull the trigger on immediately. That said, I still don't know if Kickstarter was meant for this, but I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm backing this machine. Nice. At the end of the day, it's a very high quality and well put together machine and will bring you lots and lots of joy 3D printing all the things. Listen, if you made it this far in the episode, you are awesome. Uh, thanks for coming along on this journey. I'm really glad I got to tell you about this machine. Obviously, I have a ton more things to print. Thanks to everybody that suggested awesome things. I didn't get through a lot of them for this, but I definitely wanted to get something out there before the Kickstarter ended because there's going to be a number of you that may want to back this machine based on words that I say. And if you do, I wish you the best of luck. This one's performed well. And if you get this machine, you're gonna be very, very happy. A big thanks for making it this far. And if you did, it's very kind of you because you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. And from a safe distance, high five. That's not bad. Yeah. No, That's not good. bad, right? Yeah, man. I'm excited for this, this machine. I backed it. I backed it with my money. It's like I gave them my money. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. I'm thinking about it myself. You see, I mean, I backed it for two. You did? Oh, two of them. Yeah, two of them. Nice. I might do a giveaway. Oh.